What's up everybody, this is Joshua Casper and welcome to a Photoshop tutorial. I know that's not my normal thing, but today I'm going to show you how to make a GIF animation. Mine's going to be a seamless loop of a Simpsons music oriented sequence. Uh, obviously you can use these tips and tricks for anything you're going to want to be doing. Facebook has just started to allow GIFs in the comment responses or in your posts themselves. So I figured why not just show you guys how to do it quickly and easily. So I'm inside of Photoshop right now. I'm inside of Photoshop CC and I'm going to go ahead and import the movie file. I'm going to go to file import video frames to layers. So that's going to open up your browser and just go ahead and uh, navigate to the file or the video that you want to analyze. And after Photoshop's done its thing, it might take a second depending on the size of the clip that you're analyzing. The import video to layers dialog box will open and for me specifically, I'm going to go select range because I only want a very short clip inside of this long video file. And the way I do that is move these two endpoints here, kind of zoom in on where I want it to be. And I can use the play cursor here to see if, if it's good enough. So that's all I need right there. I'm going to use those people dancing. You want to leave a little bit of a buffer because it's a lot easier to edit the frames once they've been imported into Photoshop, but you don't want to leave too much because then you're going to be doing a lot of extra processing that doesn't do anyone any good. The other thing you want to do is make sure the make frame animation is checked. It should be by default, but just in case it's not, go ahead and check that and hit OK. OK, cool. So I've imported the layers here and you can see them here on the layer panel but what I can't see is the timeline which is normal for anything like Premiere or After Effects Final Cut these types of things so what I need to do is go to window and select timeline from the options and that will show me the timeline down here and then what I can do is actually play through the timeline by hitting the play animation button And like I told you before, the only thing I'm really interested in here is the dancing instrument. So what I'm going to do is select frame 56 for me because that's just where it is, which is the last frame of this scene. And I'm going to scroll back over here and hold down shift and select them all. And now what I need to do is hit the trash can button because if you just hit the delete button it will delete the picture of the frame, but it won't delete the frame itself. So it's best just to use this trash can down here and hit yes. And now I have this. And what I want to make is a seamlessly looping GIF. So I need to kind of figure out where that animation starts and where it should stop to be able to loop. And cartoons like this, like The Simpsons and maybe South Park, probably not South Park, but definitely Family Guy, Cleveland Show, those types of things, they use a lot of looping animation to take up time. So this scene here is actually these characters dancing on a loop. So I only need that first loop. I don't need the second or the third loop because all that's going to do is add file size to my GIF. And this is a good time to say that the go-to GIF file size is 400 kilobytes or less. Let's just go ahead and play this and see if we can't spot where the loop starts and stops. So I think it's right around there. And in fact, if we look at it closely, it's actually going to be 40. You can see where his foot's just about to go flat. I think that's a good place to go. If we go back to the beginning, you can see that his foot is flat on the ground. So if we go back to 40, it's just before it goes flat. So we can take this flat frame, 41, and everything after it by holding down shift and selecting them and hitting this trash can and delete them. Now if I go ahead and play this and I have my loop function on forever, it should just go ahead and loop seamlessly. So now if we go to File, Save for Web, and we go into GIF, and we just kind of leave it how it is right now, 
you can even see that just processing it right now is taking a long time. And we're looking at 3. Point, uh, oh, well, the original is 7.91 megabytes, which is way above 400 kilobytes, right? And the first thing we can do to optimize our GIF is go into image and then go to image size. And when we adjust this image size, it's actually going to adjust all of the frames. So I'm going to knock it down to about 380. And it will show you the image size right now is 238.2 kilobytes. It was 5.93. This is great. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to shrink everything down. It might take a second. Great. This is 100%. And this is fairly large. I mean, if you're thinking about we're using this for Facebook or something, that's it's big enough. It doesn't need to be any bigger than that. The last part of the process is save for web. And in here, we can make it a lot smaller by using the GIF obviously and then if we come into the presets i found that if i use the gif 128 no dither as you can see here it looks still looks pretty good and i can actually knock down the colors here to about 80 and i think that still looks pretty good i mean no one's going to look at that and be like oh that's a terrible coloring right there you might even be able to go a little bit further but you know i don't think we need to There's no dithering web snap is fine and we're at 380 pixels right now so if you look over here, we're at 440K and we want to be under 400. So what I'm going to do is on the percentage here, knock it down to 80%, click in here, and you'll notice that we're at 308, which is much, much lower than 440. And it's under our 400K mark. And if we play the sequence now, that's essentially what we're going to see on Facebook. It looks perfectly fine. No one's going to complain about it for sure. And we can use the two up to see what it, the differences are. So if we're comparing them, this one's much more vivid, hands down. But if you're just putting this on Facebook, no one's going to, be, no one's going to remember how vivid it was in the beginning. I don't really think it's a big deal, especially when it's coming to, to, to GIF animated comment responses you know what i mean so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and hit save i'm just going to kind of untitle one gif that's fine for me and it's gone it's went ahead and saved that and all you need to do now is upload it to a server i have joshuacasper.com has its own server so i could upload it there and then i just need to share the link where i've uploaded it um there are other websites that allow for hosting gifts or hosting images in general that's where you want to upload it and then you just want to comment on facebook or put the url where it's been uploaded into your update or into a comment response and the gif will be right there present in play that's how you do it i hope that helped i hope you learned something and we'll see you next time peace